Welcome to the first screencast here at OptimizationZen.com. Last week, we released what we call the Optimization.Framework, and today I would like to show you how you can use the framework to model a Sudoku solver. I assume that you know what a Sudoku is and how the rules are defined, but before we can dive into the actual modeling, I would like to define a few terms that we will use in our model. First of all, the board of a Sudoku consists of a number of columns. And of course, it also consists of a number of rows. Now, each of these columns and rows consists of a number of cells. Usually, when you take a Sudoku, for example, from a magazine, you will find a few of these cells pre-filled with numbers. So solving the Sudoku simply means finding the appropriate numbers for all the empty cells. Of course, you can't violate any of the given constraints, like, for example, the constraint that a column cannot contain the same number twice. In our model, we will represent each number by an array of binary variables. As you can see in this example, we have nine binary variables, b1 to b9. Now, if we wanted to express that the first cell contains the number 6, we would simply go ahead and set the binary variable b6 to the value 1, and all others to zero. The reason why we have exactly nine different numbers is due to the fact that we chose a nine times nine sized board in this example. So we need nine binaries in each cell to represent all possible numbers it can contain. We will call this parameter, which defines the size of the board, the dimension of the board. As we've seen, it defines the number of columns and rows, as well as the number of cells in each column and row. It also defines the number of binary variables we need in each cell. Now there is one more sub-element in a board we haven't talked about yet, and those are the smaller areas within the board, which we will call squares. This should be everything we need to know about a Sudoku board and its elements, so let's start modeling. I have already created a new console application, and the first thing I'm going to do is add a new library package reference. In order to see this option, you will need the NuGet package manager. If you don't have it yet, you can simply go to nuget.org and download it from their website. You then go to the online tab on the left and do search for optimization using the search field. It takes a few seconds until the results show up, and when they do, you select the optimization.framework and click on install. Note that with the framework, two more packages are installed, namely Unity and Antler. Since our framework is built against the full .NET Framework 4, you need to make sure that your project targets the same framework type. So to check this, go to your project's properties and in the application tab, make sure that target framework is set to .NET Framework 4. Now let's go ahead and start creating our object model. I personally like to do this visually, and since we might want to be able to save our data to a database later, I will use an entity data model. To edit, do a right click on your project and click Add New Item. Then select the Entity Data Model and give it a name. I will call mine Sudoku Model. To create model entities, simply drag them from the toolbox onto the design surface and give them a name. Now, we will need a representing entity for each of the elements we talked about in the beginning of this webcast. That means we need an entity for the board, the columns, the rows, the squares, and the cells. Now that we have added the entities, we need to connect them by adding associations between them. A board holds a number of columns, so we are adding a one-to-many association. You can see that a navigation property appears in the board entity, 
which we will rename to columns. We do the same thing for rows, squares and cells. In addition, each column, row and square can hold multiple cells, so we will add associations between these entities as well. The result then looks like this. We can now switch over to the code. Before we start defining our mathematical model, we need to create the appropriate board object with its containing child elements. I will just paste this code in here, since all it does is creating the columns, rows, squares and cells. The first thing we need to define our model is a number of variables. These are easily created using a variable collection. A variable collection first of all takes a string which allows you to define a name prefix for all the variables within this collection. The second and third parameter define the bounds for the containing variables. In our case we want binary variables so we choose 0 for the lower bound and one for the upper bound, and also set the variable type to integer. Now we can define a number of sets which this variable collection is based on. Say we wanted one variable per cell, we could simply go ahead and provide board.columns and board.rows as parameters. But as I said in the introduction, we want to have as many binary variables per cell as defined by the dimension. So we first go ahead and define a set, or in C-sharp slang an i enumerable, which holds numbers from 1 to dimension. Now we can use this set to extend our variable collection. Now that we have our variables, we can start defining the constraints. For this, we need a model object to work with, which I simply call model. The first constraint that we are going to define will sum up all binary variables within one cell and set this sum equal to 1. This ensures that the solver only puts one number in a cell. Remember that setting the binary variable b6 in our example meant that the value in this cell is 6. In other words, we forbid that more than one binary variable per cell is activated because a cell can only contain one number. To do this, we iterate over the collection of cells and add a constraint for each one of them. In a valid solution of a Sudoku, a number cannot appear twice within one column. Let's add the constraint to the model. To achieve this, we iterate over all columns and all numbers. We sum up the binary variables which represent a particular number within a column and set the sum to 1. The same constraint can be defined for the rows and squares of the model. We are now ready to solve the model. We create a solver object and pass the model to the solve method of the solver instance. In order to make this work, we will need the appropriate solver DLL in our project references. Since I am using Gurobi as my solver, I will need to add a reference to the gurobi 40net You should make sure that your targeted platform is set to any CPU. Gorobi will access an unmanaged DLL and depending on which target platform this DLL was built for, you might end up with a bad image format exception if you do not set your target platform to any CPU. We could execute the program now and we would get a solution back, but let's quickly do two more things. Up until now we haven't fixed any cells to values. This means that Gorobi will create a random solution that fulfills the constraints. 
So the first thing I would like to do is fix a cell to a value. To achieve this, we simply set the lower bound of the appropriate binary variable to 1. In this example, we are setting the cell in column 0 and row 1 to the value of 7. The second thing I would like to do is create a simple output of the solution. We assign the calculated variable values, which are contained in the solution object, to our variable collection. Each variable has a value property, which is now filled with the calculated value. All we need to do now is loop over each row, column and number and check the value of the corresponding binary variable. If it is set to 1, then we know that the corresponding value in the current cell is the value of number. We write this value to the console. To make the result look like a Sudoku tableau, we also insert a right line statement after each row. And in order to see the console, we add a console read statement at the end of the program. When we now start our application, we see the result in the form of a Sudoku tableau. Note that the cell in column 0 and row 1 indeed has the value 7 because we fixed it to this value. 